Hi, Michael. Hello. Now uh, I'm going to ask you some questions uh, about your personal experience throughout uh, your whole working and traveling lifetime. Okay. Uh, if you are ready, let's start. Let's do it. Would you like to talk about yourself? Sure. My name is Michael. I'm a technology professional. I've been working from home for about 10 years. And after a few years of working from home, I decided I could make my home a little bit more interesting. And I started to explore the world. Like work and travel at the same time? I think most people would prefer to only travel and not work, <laughs> but <laughs> of course, traveling is expensive, right? You have to pay for tickets and places to stay and food to eat, and, um, and I'm not wealthy. Um, I don't, and maybe some people think of me as wealthy, but you know, I didn't have a whole bunch of money given to me from my parents, so. Um, you know, I, I can't I can't afford it. I don't have that kind of money. So working while I'm traveling is how I'm able to pay for the costs of traveling. Uh, how many countries have you been around the world? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm not counting. I, I, I guess maybe about 30. I think 30 countries plus or minus five. To me, the goal is is not how many countries I can go to, it's more about what I'm doing. During our time here in Chamonix, we've been able to experience a lot of amazing things. Uh, Carol learned how to ski for her first time. I was able to spend some time up on the glacier, uh, the Argentier, and we spent some time in Switzerland. Uh, we got to go to Lucerne and Geneva. Um, we spent some time at the spa. Maybe some people go to countries for short periods of time. And when I go somewhere for a short period of time, I always think that I want to go back and I want to do something different. So I try to, to stay for longer periods of time. and. Working from home gives me that mm. ability. Do you think is this a hard lifestyle? No, no. This is I, this is a dream. I think. I mean, my, my work is difficult. The, the technology work that I do is, is not easy. And it, it's a little bit stressful, I think, because I'm always changing from one place to another. And I think staying in one place, you, be, you can become comfortable and you can become relaxed. You don't need to think about basic things like where you're going to wash your clothes. And if the bed that you're sleeping in is going to give you a good night sleep or maybe it's not. <laughs> so it's, it can be a little bit stressful, but at the same time, it's also very exciting because I'm able to accomplish things that I, I can't do in my, in my hometown. What's your favorite country around the world and why? <laughs> it's a difficult question because I'd, I'd say there's maybe three countries that are my favorite, but if I have to pick one, then I have to say Brazil. Brazil is my favorite country. And, and it's my favorite country because it has the best conditions for kite surfing that I've found. 
It has reliable wind every day from about 10 o'clock in the morning until the sun goes down and from July until January which is more than half of the year, you have wind every day, all day. It's also really nice weather, it's warm, it's not expensive, and um, you know, I, I like the people, I think that the people live a different lifestyle. <laughs> I'm laughing because her cat's attacking. <laughs> the, I like the people of Brazil because they live a more simple lifestyle, right? Like. I think in the United States and Europe, a lot of people are constantly busy working and and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with working. I actually think working is a really good ethic to have, but I also think that people don't enjoy their lives. Yeah. They work so hard that they don't they don't have time to enjoy it. And and Brazilian people, in my opinion, really enjoy their lives. What's your favorite city also? My favorite city? Yeah. I like Tel Aviv because it's kind of a blend of, I would say, New York City and like maybe like a Southern Californian beach town. So they have a lot of culture, a lot of music and art, delicious food, but it's on this beautiful beach that is wonderful to swim in. You can surf there. It's not the best surfing you've ever had in your life, but you can surf in Tel Aviv. Israel is a country that has had immigration from many different parts of the world. So you'll meet Russian people and European people and South American Latin people. You'll meet people from all over the world there. And, and that's a really interesting experience to get to know people from so many different places in a single city. How did you decide to come to Turkey? That's that's a that's an interesting story. <laughs> um, a, a long time ago, I, I don't even remember how many years ago, maybe seven years ago, a friend of mine asked me to go to see the Egyptian pyramids in Cairo. And, and so I negotiated with him that I would go to Egypt with him if we also went to Israel. But you can't travel from Egypt to Israel, or at least at that point in time. I don't know if you can now, but at that point in time, there was no direct flights from Cairo to Tel Aviv. So uh, we needed to find another connection. And we decided if we're going to go to a third place, we might as well stay for a while. And I've always thought that Istanbul must be an interesting city because, and I didn't know much about it, but I knew that it was essentially where Europe and Asia meet, which are two very different cultures. We ended up having a bad experience in Egypt, which is another interesting story that I won't go into right now. We left Egypt early and we gave the extra days from Egypt to Turkey. Um, and so that's, that's why we came here. And we loved this place so much that we've come back I've come back many times. My, the friend that I was with actually married yeah. a Turkish woman. <laughs> yes. And um, I think this is my sixth time now in Turkey. Tur Turkey is a country that has fascinating history. And I think no matter what your religion is and no matter what your political affiliation is, you can't deny that the the history of Turkey and, and the Ottoman Empire has shaped the world to be the way that it is. And and to me that's that's a very fascinating thing to come and learn about. What was the worst experience you ever had? I've had I've had like a lot of bad experiences and I don't there's some of them that I don't really want to talk about yeah. just because <laughs> You know, people get sensitive and, but I, I, I think the most interesting bad experience was when we went to Egypt and we were touring the pyra pyramids. My friend has this thing where he likes to fly a kite, a small kite in front of famous places like the, um, the Eiffel Tower and um, Notre Dame in, in Paris. And he wanted to get a photo of himself flying a kite in front of the pyramids in Egypt. And so I said, okay, I'll take a photo, you know. And so he flew his kite. And then while he was packing his kite up into his bag, a whole bunch of police officers came 
and told us that this is illegal and that you can't do this here. And they actually took us to the UNESCO police office and they started to question us about this incident. And they don't have, or at least what, from what I heard, they don't have a word for kites in Arabic. Maybe the word parachute actually means kite, but we kept on hear, hearing the word parachute and camera and we couldn't understand anything else, just parachute and camera. And um, they ended up let it, letting us go, but they took the memory card. And the main reason for that is because they knew that you can recover the photos from the memory card, uh, which is true. I don't know, like, I guess that was a poor decision on our part, but it wasn't like a crowded area. And um, I won't say any more about that, but it wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant experience. <laughs> the best experience. I think I'm going to go with Chamonix, France on a powder day with about a meter of fresh snow from the top of the Aiguille de Midi down the Valley Blanche, down the, uh, the Grand Envers route of the, the Valley Blanche was, was probably one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Skiing in Chamonix is, I can't even explain how amazing it is. It's something you kind of have to go and, um, but one way to think about it is, is that the mountains in France are taller than mountains in most of the rest of the world. There's very few places in the world that have mountains with as much vertical feet from the top to the bottom. And, and in Chamonix, the valley floor is about a thousand meters and the top of the mountains is, is about 3,800 meters. So you ski vertically um, a, a vertical drop of 2,800 meters. And, and to be able to do that with one meter of fresh snow is, it's, it's a dream, man. <laughs> Uh, do you have any advice to the people who wants to travel and work at the same time? Yeah, you know, it's it's. I, w I wish I could say that it's an easy thing to get into. Um, th there's many ways you can do it, and I don't know everything about all the ways. You know, I, I meet a lot of people that refer to themselves as, as digital nomads, and I think a lot of people work for themselves. They're kind of self-made entrepreneurs, and I, I won't speak to that because I, I'm not doing that. I, I work for a company. Um, I think if, if you want to work for a company and you want that company to trust you from, uh, while working from home, you need to be able to demonstrate that you can work for a long period of time without stopping. And, and this is something that is maybe kind of counter to popular culture these days. I don't think people these days want to work for long periods of time. You know, in my experience, if, if you can demonstrate that you're able to stay with one company for at least three years, ideally five years, and, and be productive and be reliable, be somebody that that company can count on, then they're much more likely to be willing to allow you to travel and, and not worry about where you're at. Take responsibility myself for my time and my, my work tasks and um, and there's a, a trust there, but building that trust requires time. You have to demonstrate that up front. Maybe that's changing now. I think because of the coronavirus, companies are are more willing to take a risk. And and I'm noticing a lot of big companies like Amazon just announced that they're going to be slower to move people back into their offices. And I think Google is is doing the same. And I think, and I know that the company that I work for, um, they've announced that not everybody is going to come back to the office. Some people are gonna stay working from home permanently. And, and some people will kind of go into a mixture of going into the office a few days a week and working from home a few days a week. So if, if this is the kind of life that you want, this could actually be a positive outcome of, of the pandemic in, in the sense that companies will be more willing to trust this kind of a lifestyle. Uh, I think your lifestyle is very inspirational for me and also for my uh, audience on YouTube. 
Thank you for coming. Do you want to add anything you like? Sure, yeah. I want to say thank you to Enes and Ida for allowing us to um, hang out and allowing us to stay at your house and being so hospitable. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. <laughs> and um, thank you for asking these questions. I hope the information that I have is helpful to somebody out there. But sometimes I feel like that's what traveling is all about. Making a plan, following through with it, watching it fail.